In today's video, we asked a question, how radioactive is it? What we've got is a late 1950s, early 1960s Elgin Deluxe Shockmaster wristwatch with the classic glow-in-the-dark radium dial. If you're ever at an estate sale, at a pawn shop, antique store, anything like that, and you're looking at watches, one of the telltale signs of a radium-faced watch is the browned lens. The radiation coming from the radium tends to turn the lens brown or dark. And here's a watch next to it that is slightly newer, although if it had a radium dial, it too would have a discolored lens. So this is a classic sign. You'll even see this on some alarm clocks as well. Another interesting point is that a lot of people tend to think a radium watch is going to glow in the dark and you should be able to spot this thing when you turn the lights off. That is absolutely not true, especially with the older watches. In fact, really any radium watch is going to be old and it's going to apply to what I'm going to tell you. The glow-in-the-dark paint, which has the radium mixed in with it, loses its glowing ability. It just burns out after a while and it does not react to the radium um, exciting the molecules within the fluorescent powder to make it glow. Now you'll find, I'm going to turn the lights out here in a second, it still reacts a little bit to ultraviolet light. And in fact, you'll probably see a little bit of persistence left over when I turn the light off. But it just isn't good enough anymore. It's just worn out. It just will not react to the radium. So let's go ahead and turn the lights out and I'll kind of show you. Here it is illuminated with ultraviolet. So you can see that it has a little bit of persistence, maybe about a second and uh, the glow just peters out. The radium is doing absolutely nothing to maintain any glow or even cause any glow whatsoever. Let's start some radioactive testing. What I've got here is a classic SAFMO scintillation detector. I've got it currently set to the times 1500 scale, so we're gonna go ahead and read the bottom scale on the meter. It shows 0 to 150, so when it's at the times 1500 scale, it's 0 to 1500. All right, I won't irritate you with the noise too much there, but that's probably about 1,250 counts per second. So as a reminder, gamma scintillation detectors detect primarily only gamma radiation. And let's go ahead and do another test that we've done in other videos utilizing the Model 500 nuclear scaler made by the Nucleus. This is going to give us a count rate timed at one minute, showing exactly how many counts we get per minute of gamma radiation coming from this watch. But before we do that, let's go ahead and set this watch across the room here, and let's go ahead and do a time count. It'll show us normal background radiation. We know that this particular shop averages around between 5,800 to 6,200 counts per minute background radiation. So let's go ahead and give that a start, but we're going to do it on the time lapse mode. That's pretty close, 5,949 counts per minute. Let's go ahead and now do a time count on the face of the watch. We'll go ahead and put these here so I'm not setting the detector directly on the top of the face. We'll go ahead and set that just like that. Go ahead and reset the meter. Actually, let me move this over so you can see the count. There we go. Reset the meter, and let's go ahead and start another timed count. One hundred and forty-four thousand two hundred and twenty counts per minute at the watch face, which, if you subtract the background radiation of five thousand nine hundred and forty-nine, that leaves us with a raw count rate of one hundred and thirty-eight thousand two hundred and seventy-one gamma counts per minute. But that's the watch face. That's not the part that's really exposed to your skin. You know, the watch is gonna be on your wrist. So let's go ahead and measure 
the output on the back of the watch. So we'll turn this around just like that. Set that right like that. There we go. Let's go ahead and reset it and do another time lapse. All right, that's a bit of a difference. 82,194. So you subtract the background of 5,949, and then you get 76,245 counts per minute compared to the face of the watch, which was 138,271, which makes a total difference between the front and the back of the watch with background subtracted 62,026 counts per minute. So let's do one more test about how much the radiation tapers off from a distance. In this case, we are going to measure it at approximately five and a half inches from the face of the watch. And we'll carefully set the detector here. Go ahead and hit the reset button and we'll start another timed count. Ten thousand thirty eight counts per minute at that distance, subtracting background of five thousand nine hundred forty nine leaves you with a difference of four thousand eighty nine counts per minute. All right, so that's been pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and do some penetration tests with lead to see how potent the gammas are coming off the face of this watch, including the back of the watch, using quarter inch thick plate lead. I've got, actually I have three sheets of this, so we can uh, ramp this up to three quarters of an inch um, and see if uh, the gammas coming off this watch can make it through all three. Okay, everything's set up. Let's go ahead and put the first plate on this. And we'll put the detector, get it lined up the best we can. I think that's about centered where it's supposed to be. And let's see, you can see the readout. Let's go ahead and move this over just a tad. We go and let's go ahead and reset this and we'll start the time count Twenty-three thousand fifteen. so if you subtract normal background of 5,949 we come out with 17,066 counts per minute still penetrating quarter inch thick of lead Let's go ahead and add another sheet. So now we are gonna be up to a half inch thick of lead. And let's go ahead and start another time count. 15,000. Still seems to have no problem penetrating the lead. It does show reduction. Uh, we started out with um, 17,066 on the last. Let's see, what do we got the difference? Obviously we have 13,201, subtracting your background radiation of 5,949, which leaves a total count of 7,252. So let's go ahead and add yet another quarter inch plate. We are now up to three quarters of an inch of lead. And we will start another time count. 15,000. I accidentally hit the reset button, but you can see at the end of that time count, it was 9,492. So you subtract the background, which was 5,949, leaves you with 3,543 counts, still penetrating three quarters of an inch of lead. 
So I have no more quarter inch thick plates of lead. So let's go ahead and try a two inch thick block of lead. I think we're not gonna get any detectable radiation above background with this. But you never know, you never know. So here we go and we'll clear out the results here and start our final time count. Five thousand six hundred and seventy one, which is lower than normal background radiation, which we measured at five thousand nine hundred and forty nine. This is actually not unexpected as the lead has done such a good job over kilowise at blocking the radiation that it has actually blocked terrestrial background radiation at the face of the detector, which results in a slightly lower count. Let's do one last test. We will go ahead and run this through the gamma spectrometer just to kind of see what the isotopic output is on this. And let's get this kind of nestled in here properly. So I don't smash it with the bricks. There we go. Get this all covered up nice and neat. Honestly, this much lead shielding is not necessary. This is just habit. I could probably just put the scintillator right up to it out in the open and still get just as good of a spectra, but let's do it right. Okay, let's go ahead and move over to the screen where we're going to go ahead and start this. So the gamma spectroscopy of radium is going to give you what's called the hand of radium or the five fingers of radium. And it kind of plays out like this. On the far right hand side, you're going to have a peak that's a little bit separated. That's going to be bismuth 214. And then these next three peaks here are going to be um, lead 214. And then the final peak on the far left hand side is going to be radium 226. So let's go ahead and start this and see if the hand starts forming. Being a fairly potent source, relatively speaking, um, you're seeing that this is forming pretty quick. And you can already see the hand of radium forming. There's your bismuth 214. There's your lead 214, these three right here. And there's your radium 226. This very large peak is what's called your X-ray peak or breaking radiation peak. So all these other isotopes, when they hit the side of the lead chamber and um, when they slow down, they emit X-rays and that is gonna be your X-ray peak. All right, that just kind of shows the, um, the strength of the radium in these watches. I mean, it really goes through a lot of lead. It's kind of surprising. Um, is it dangerous on a dose rate? Well, I think that's debatable because these things have been around for many years and so many people have worn these things. And, uh, you know, I mean, speaking from my personal family's history, my grandparents, my great grandparents all wore these things. None of them had cancer. None of them had melanomas on their wrist where they wore this stuff. Um, and none of them died of cancer. So, uh, but individual results may vary. Now, where the real danger is, is contamination of the radium underneath the watch face or the crystal. And if that crystal gets broken or the watch face pops off and you've got all that radium paint going all over the place, um, it's gonna get on somebody's hands, it's gonna get into food, you rub your eyes, it's gonna get in your eyes, there's all sorts of contamination issues. And the last thing you want is something of a radiological strength that we just witnessed getting into your eyes or your mouth or somewhere where it doesn't need to be or cross-contaminated to somebody else. So would I buy one of these? Absolutely not. Would I um, recommend anybody to get one? No. Um, this one is solid. It's intact. It's a family heirloom. It stays in a box and we're just going to keep it. Um, it's not going to be used or worn. In fact, this is probably the first time I actually had this thing out. 
um, in quite a while just for this video. But after this, it's going right back in its box into the attic. So there you have it. Hey, if you find this video interesting and you would like to see more, please subscribe and um, we'll see you on the next one.